everyone, welcome to this session. I hope that you have enjoyed all the sessions from other guys and that you are not tired yet, so we are able to enjoy this session one, this session two. My name is Thomas, and I would like to show you how you can build your own mobile application for the business center. In the first part of the session, we will look on how, uh, how the standard version of the business central application uh, for the mobile devices uh, works and uh, how we can use this uh, standard application in comparison to our own application. Then we will look on some examples of uh, how you can build or what you can build with your own application. And then we will look on uh, one example in more detail uh, that I have prepared. Yeah. Uh, we will start with the standard one. Uh, I hope that everybody knows how the standard application look, uh, what can be achieved with it and uh, for which uh, industries and which purpose is it uh, possible to use it or is suitable to use. I don't want to go in uh, detail to every functionality of the standard application. There are definitely uh, good uh, resources uh, from the Microsoft about uh, how you can build the pages for, uh, the, for the usage in uh, the mobile application and what can be achieved with it. So uh, let's look on some pros and cons. The main advantages of uh, the standard business central application is that uh, the application is easy to launch because uh, the only one thing that you need to do to be able to use the mobile, app uh, the mobile application is uh, to download it from uh, the App Store or Android Store and then uh, connect to the business central instance uh, under the web client uh, address. So that's there. There's definitely no thing that could go wrong, at least once you have uh, installed your instance of the business center application or once you uh, work with the web client in the mobile. Uh, again, another good thing about uh, this application is that you don't need to do any development. If you have stable application that works on uh, the web client. There are definitely some things that you have to do in different way to use it uh, correctly in the mobile phone uh, or in the mobile application. But uh, yeah, it's just too uh, easy to do to create uh, some uh, to do some processes easier, not to to work with them. So uh, it's not necessary to do any development of working uh, solution, working pages. And uh, another advantage is, is that the application is maintained by Microsoft. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that uh, it needs uh, explanation. Uh, it's maintained by Microsoft. So uh, there will be definitely uh, upgrades, updates. So we will be able to uh, provide this uh, application to our customers without any hesitation. On the other hand, uh, with this application, there are definitely some things that uh, are not so good for us or that are uh, harder to work with. Uh, one of them is robust solution. Um, I thought whether to put this uh, item uh, to pros or uh, to the cons, but I then decided to, to do it as some disadvantages. Um, the robust solution means uh, that uh, the application contains all the functionality or almost all the functionality uh, from the web client. So uh, if you need to do anything uh, in, the, uh, web, in the mobile application that you are normally doing in the web client, I'm 99% sure that uh, you will be able to do it. Uh, but that also means that uh, the processes are not or automatically uh, optimized for uh, the mobile application. That means that uh, some processes are not optimized for the touch screens, for the small screen of your mobile device, 
because it's uh, really different to work with the touch screen on your uh, laptop or to work with the mobile phone like this one or this one uh, just to uh, touch one thing on these devices in compare of to touch uh, the, the one thing on the wall screen of your laptop. Yeah. So definitely a robust solution means that you have access to everything from the web client, but on contrary, uh, you have uh, some processes not optimized for your devices. Um, it's linked uh, to uh, the other uh, to the other two points. Uh, it's as I write as I wrote on the slides. It's uh, harder to customize or to automate processes. What does it What does it mean? Uh, if you want to do anything uh, to change uh, the order of the fields on the page uh, in the web client or in the mobile phone uh, client. Uh, it's easy to do. Yeah, it's definitely one thing you can achieve uh, without any problem. Just put your um, code uh, in uh, AL, create an extension and uh, change the order of the fields. However, if you need to automate some processes, like uh, if you write uh, one, if, uh, if you, um, yeah, one thing that we had uh, a problem to do is when you need to uh, verify whether the code that is uh, inserted into the field is inserted through keyboard or whether it's a uh, read, uh, read through a uh, barcode reader. For example, on this device, uh, you have uh, you have possibility to write uh, the, co the code of the item or the barcode using keyboard that is here or using the sof software keyboard on uh, the touch screen or uh, read the barcode using, uh, using uh, reader that is uh, on uh, the top side of uh, this device. So what this thing is, uh, as this um, barcode reader works as uh, the keyboard, it's not normally uh, able, uh, able to, uh, to find out whether the user used uh, this reader or the keyboard. So uh, it's definitely, or from my knowledge, it's not uh, possible to find out in the business center. But with your own app, uh, you can do it. Uh, but what about your own application? Uh, what's uh, the advantages and disadvantages of your application? Uh, from the advantage si advantages side, uh, you have absolutely freedom of what you uh, want to do, what you will do, or uh, which functionality you will add to the application. So if you need to log, uh, log the GPS of the user uh, anytime when the user do anything in the application, yeah, you can just save it in the, in the uh, file on, uh, on the device and then update it to the business center once you are on, online or yeah. What when you need to customize anything? Yeah, you just rewrite the code, and you can uh, do anything you would like, you like, or anything you need to do. Automate processes again, uh, as you have all access to the source code, you are able to change anything. And uh, the last one is um, it's not in the bad way. Uh, I appreciate a lot of things that Microsoft do. Some, uh, I think that uh, some of you uh, know that uh, some versions of uh, applications that Microsoft did are not uh, well tested. For example, last uh, Business Central, Business Central 17.0 uh, for the Czech Republic was uh, published from Microsoft without, uh, b without symbols. So it wasn't possible to work with uh, this version. So from uh, the side uh, that it's not maintained by Microsoft, you have absolutely control over every version and you are able to, uh, to verify any change before publish it uh, to the store. On contrary, uh, there are again, some things that are uh, 
that works as a disadvantage. Um, in the business central standard application, uh, when you need to change um, page or change the field, as we already spoke about the field, uh, if you need to change the order of the fields on the page, you just uh, publish a new version of your extension and then uh, it's automatically propagated uh, to uh, the Business Central mobile application. Uh, with your own application, you, you have to do it in more complicated way. You can, uh, you can publish it on the, business, uh, on the App Store or Android Store uh, manually or uh, if you have only a few devices where your application uh, is running, then you can um, publish it on the device uh, through email or to any other sources uh, that, or other ways uh, you have. Uh, another way that is definitely more challenging with your, uh, with your own application is that you need to, uh, to program all things from the scratch. Uh, it cover, uh, what I mean is uh, covered by the, point, by the second and third point from the disadvantage side, because uh, <clears throat> uh, you need to provide additional resources uh, at the beginning of the programming to program the core functionality. For example, to how to work with uh, the filters of uh, OData uh, within the Business Central API. And again, it's another application that you need to maintain, but uh, it's usually not uh, the main disadvantages because uh, maintaining an application, if you don't need to do any uh, breaking change or large change, it's usually easy. Uh, if you are company who has experiences with this, then it's uh, something that you are normally do with uh, Business Central application or with any other application that you are developing. Okay, let's look on uh, the, uh, your own application. Uh, first, I apologize for uh, these screenshots that are in, uh, in uh, Czech language because it, this, these screenshots are from uh, the, the original application that we are using uh, for one of our customers. It, uh, it's, it's prepared for um, working with advanced uh, warehouse, with the bins, with the uh, zones, and uh, with a lot of items. So for example, the picture on the left side uh, is uh, the home page. Uh, we did it as the standard uh, page uh, of the business center. So there are some bricks. And uh, as is normal within the mobile application on the left side, uh, in the top, there is a menu. Through menu, you can go to the second picture or the middle one. It's uh, for movements in the business center. Again, you can put your uh, location, uh, your item number in the second field uh, through your barcode scanner. It's automatically fill uh, your uh, unit of measure if you have a unit of measure filled in the barcodes. And uh, then you can uh, scan your bin code, uh, the, your old bin code and new bin code. And uh, to using uh, the confirm button on the right, si right top side then confirm uh, the movement. Uh, the last picture is about uh, how you can find out uh, where the item is. So you have an uh, item in the, your hand and you need to find out uh, in which bin uh, this item uh, should be. So you can load uh, the barcode and uh, bins are listed uh, in some order uh, to, uh, to Business Central API. Or again, on the second uh, part of the screen, uh, you can uh, find out where, what items should be in this bin. It's same task, but from the other side. Okay, now uh, I think that we have maybe five or six minutes left. Let's start with an example. Uh, 
I've, I've prepared an example where I can show you how you can create an application with uh, functionality to look up items using barcodes and then how can you disable item using uh, or set uh, the blocked uh, mark to true or false based on what you want to achieve and uh, how can you do it uh, in a really quick way using Flutter uh, programming language or Dart programming language with a Flutter extension. What's Flutter? Flutter is a uh, and Dart. Flutter is a lang extension of the language of uh, Dart language created by Google. Uh, here on this uh, on uh, the slide, you can find out the documentation and uh, the manual. How can you start working with the Flutter? Uh, why I chose this one? Um, it's Primarily because I wanted to work with the language that uh, is really quick to learn. And I find out that uh, the Flutter has a really good documentation and uh, well maintained with uh, many examples. So we are able to learn it uh, really quickly. What's on this screen? Um, under the uh, link to the documentation, you can find out uh, the standard uh, application that is uh, created when you create a new project. It, this is something like Hello World. Uh, and uh, on the left side of the screen, uh, there is a picture of the screen uh, of this application. There is uh, some button in the bottom side uh, which on the, on the push uh, increase the number uh, in the middle of the screen. Yeah, it's just to show you uh, how the standard application looks like. Let's look on the another slide. Uh, yeah, it's a part of my, my of my example where I can where I show you how you can list items using uh, Flutter. This is uh, just the code for the UI. Every page in the Flutter is built from widgets. For example, uh, there, uh, in the top side of the page, there is a field and under this field, there are items uh, that are downloaded from the business center. So in the code, uh, where, uh, in the first part where the, when the one mark is, uh, there, is the there is a form uh, and in, in which the padded text form field is located. This is the field with the item identifier. Under, the, under this uh, widget, there is a widget expanded that just expands the content or the list uh, or the child that is inside uh, this, uh, with, uh, this uh, widget to the whole page. Let's look on uh, another slide. Uh, on this slide, it's the same screenshot of the application as was on the previous one, but uh, now some of them are red. Uh, that means that uh, these items are blocked in the business center. And uh, there are some actions that are, able, that, uh, are available for each line. Uh, for, uh, for the blocked one, uh, that means for the red lines, uh, the action is to unblock and for, for the unblocked, uh, for unblocked lines that are uh, in white color, uh, the action is to block them. Uh, on the right side, you can see the codes that are behind it. Uh, so you can see in the upper side, there is method S list item that provides a list item and the li list item uh, widget is uh, on the right side uh, below uh, the this method. Uh, this just again, only, uh, only provide uh, information how to build the widget or how to uh, how to print uh, the information to do UI. So uh, it could be shorter the code. This code is just to look uh, good in the in the final application. So for example, if you leave uh, color colors white, then there will be some gray color uh, behind uh, the forms. So yeah. It's up to you how you uh, style the application. Okay, now uh, we already saw how the UI is created and now we need to load data from the business center. Uh, on this slide, there's a 
how I created a filter to filter only uh, items that we want to see based on uh, the uh, barcode that, I, that we filled into the field on the previous slides. But let's uh, skip to um, the next slide. Uh, there's how I loaded the data. I already, uh, I got uh, the filters for as a parameter. So I will skip filters because it's uh, something that is uh, really normal for any developer in the business central. Um, and I will focus on uh, how to go, how to get the uh, data. In Flutter, uh, there is a library for uh, all HTTP calls. So I just need to use it. For, so for loading data, I uh, used uh, the method get uh, that is uh, on the left uh, picture of the code. And then uh, I, if I got uh, right status code, state, uh, right response status code 200, then I process uh, the fetch uh, response, which is on the right side. I got it from uh, the library that I used to get data as uh, a map and uh, as it's a uh, standard OData REST response, then in the first, uh, la la first layer, there is only two elements. One is OData context and the second one is value. So if uh, it contains OData context, then I uh, skipped to value and got all, all the values and loaded uh, it into my response model uh, class that contains the specific uh, values for, uh, in this example that contains uh, all the information about the item itself. Uh, update values uh, or update data uh, is in the same way. Again, I use uh, the same um, library and uh, now I use, uh, instead of get method, I use a patch method. Again, it's a standard um, REST uh, API communication uh, that is maybe uh, that we are familiar with. So I don't uh, go into any details. I just put URL uh, with uh, identification of the, uh, of the API and then uh, some headers uh, with uh, OData tag and the body uh, that contains only change to the field I want to change. So uh, on the left side, you can see that I changed blocked from one value to another value based on uh, the action that the user uh, did on the page. Okay, this was the last slide of the presentation. And uh, now we can look on some questions if there are any questions.